Greetings. My name is Paul, and I am the uh, lead research technician here at the Ahada Linux Research Labs, and I'm also the administrator of the Pop OS Linux Facebook group on Facebook. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to install uh, the Kaspersky virus removal tool on Pop OS Linux 22.04. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here's my pop installation here. Open a terminal, show you my fast fetch uh, screen to prove that I'm actually in a pop session here. Okay, pop OS 2204. And we're going to install the Kaspersky removal tool on pop. Okay, so we can clear on that. And just want to say that the, this, um, this particular tool from Kaspersky is not a real-time virus antivirus tool but it's an on-demand scanner so it's not real-time but on-demand okay so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download the application file and then we're gonna um, then we're gonna make it executable then we're gonna run it pretty much sure that those are the three main steps that we have to do download the app file make it executable and then run it okay so let's go to the website here okay and we're gonna go ahead and download the um, the, re the virus removal tool for Linux then we're gonna make it executable and then we're gonna run it okay so I'm okay with just uh, downloading it right here and let's check the um, let's check the uh, the progress here okay got a few minutes and back when it's back when it's done downloading but it's, it looks good to this point here okay that took a few minutes to download but everything uh, downloaded um, smoothly no errors it is a dot run uh, file it's got a dot run extension okay so that's kinda new to, to me to, to some degree and probably new to most people too I haven't worked with dot runs, but let's see what happens, okay? So I can go ahead and X that out. And before I go into the file manager here to make it executable, I want to check something in the terminal real quick about it. So I'm going to CD into wherever it was saved, which is my download folder here. Okay. Let's spot it here. Okay, here it is. I'd like to see what's inside this file. You know, what kind of a file type is it? So I'm going to go ahead and use the file command and pass that file into it. Let's see what let's see what it says. Uh, shell script, you know, okay, it's a shell script. Bash shell script, I guess. Okay, so that gives us some information as to what it, what it what it is to some degree. A shell script. Okay, good. Okay, so that gives us some information as to what the file type is. Shell script. Okay. So I can go ahead and clear on that, and I'll come back here in a minute, and we can make it executable in the command line. But we can also make it executable in the um, in our GUI file manager here. So we'll go into our download folder, okay, and we'll spot it here, okay. Right click on it, come down to properties. You don't need to worry about any of these other ones right right now. Just properties, and then permissions. Okay, read write. Every read write, okay, everything looks good there. I do believe all I have to do is just do, just check that. Allow executing file as a program, okay? And that's pretty much that for making it executable from the GUI file manager, okay? If you want to do that also in the terminal, okay, this is where it lives, right? In the download folder? right here you see before it was black I do believe so that made it turn green which means it's executable at this point um, if for some reason you weren't able to do it properly here with the right click to make it executable here on the permissions tab if you weren't able to do that for whatever reason then you would have been, you can um, you know access it in the terminal here downloads here it is right here and we can issue some. We can issue a, a chmod, a command to make it executable here. So that command would be 
this right right here. It would be don't know if we need sudo. I'll put sudo there. And it would be chmod change mode. And we're going to we're going to add executable permission on that file. It's let's see what it does. It, it's already executable, so I don't know what's going to happen here. Okay. It would have just turned from black to green just the way it did before. Okay, so that's good there. So you can you can make it executable this way as well in the terminal. Okay? That's pretty much about it as far as um, setting everything up. We downloaded the, you know, the file and we made it executable. Now all we have to do is just run it. Okay. Okay. So we can run it two different ways. Now I'm not gonna. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be installed through just the traditional way. So I don't know if you can put it on the path. So you can run it anywhere in the file system. So the way I'm going to show it, and I'll check that later. I'm going to do my own research later to see if this kind of a file, this kind of a setup can be put on the path variable so we can run it from anywhere in the system. But for now, we're, I'm just going to go ahead and run it from the download folder here and from the file, from the, um, the GUI file manager here. And I don't think it's going to actually install a, a dedicated uh, launcher in the in the um well actually I've, it's already been installed right okay so let's see if it's here looking for what Kaspersky so we've already installed it so let's see if it shows up here it, according to the documentation it's not supposed to show up here as a traditionally installed program with a you know with um with a the, the traditional launcher so let's see if it's here anything to do with Kaspersky Okay, it doesn't look like it's here. Okay, so you really can't run it from there. You're going to have to run it either from the file manager here or from the download folder or wherever you save it from, wherever you save it to. I'm just going to leave it in the download folder here and we're going to run it from there. Okay, so let's try to run it the first way here in the file manager, in the download folder here. Okay, here's the file here. You can do it a couple different ways. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it this way. Run as a program and then we can also just do a, a regular double click on it and we'll see what that does. Okay. So let's try to run it see what happens. Right click and I'm going to go to run as a program and let's see what happens. Okay, I, I need to authenticate my root password. Not your Kaspersky, just your regular root password that you set up for your on your Linux distro, on, on the pop. Your user uh, password on the system, not Kaspersky. Okay. Let's see what happens here. My first time really doing this. Okay, that looks good. And I'm not going to get into all the usage of it. Just get you to the point where it's installed and launched, and then you can take it from there by uh, going over the, uh, the the Kaspersky documentation or the docs. Okay, this looks pretty good. Let me go ahead and uh, see what I can do here real quick. Confirm some of these things here. Let me scroll down here real quick. Okay, I think uh, I can just go ahead and accept and get past that screen. And let's just see if it gives me the, um, if it launches the, the GUI app after all that. Okay, it's initializing here, okay. That looks pretty good. Um, I don't see a. I don't see a way to make it uh, full screen, so I'm just going to leave it right there, and I think it, that's good enough. Uh, go ahead and use it, set it up, use it. Okay, so that that was how to launch it that way. And then let's see what happens if we double click it. And okay, that looks like. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Yeah, in the documentation it did say that it might open some kind of a, a text editor. So that's what that that's what that looks like happened here. So I'm going to X that out, and I'm just going to leave it at just uh, tell you to run it as as a program here by right clicking on it. Don't double click it. That didn't seem to work. And the documentation of the Kaspersky documentation actually even said that that, that might happen. So I would just go ahead and, and um, do a right click and then run as a program there. Okay. So that's that's one way to run it there. So there's no GUI launcher, right? And like I said about the whole path thing, I don't know if um, um, if you can put it on the path. I think you can. I'll try that later. In the meantime, 
since it's not on the path, it's going to only be able to be run from wherever that file has been saved, which is here in the download folder, right? So we'll spot it one more time here, and we'll run it from the download folder here manually. Okay? So we'll do a dot slash on that, and then tab over. See what I did there? Dot slash. I put K in, then I just I hit the tab key, and it, and it completes it. Okay, so this is the command here to run it manually from the download folder in the terminal. Okay, so once you have this all set up here, enter on that, and let's see if we get the same thing. Okay, I need to authenticate again, and then we'll see what happens. Looks like it's going to be okay. And we're going to get the same screen we got last time. Okay, I can go full screen there. A few ticks there, except on that and then it's going to give me the same screen we got before after in this initializes here in a couple of seconds okay good okay so at this point it looks like it's been installed and ready to use so I'm not going to go any further um, me and you we can both use it later on our own time when we go over the documentation so it's been installed made executable and it's been launched so I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and click that off here and uh, go ahead and um, stop everything here except control Z out of there go back to my root folder and leave you with the um, the fast fetch screen oh, a little side note neo fetch has been abandoned and fast fetch amongst others is like the mo is the um, the recommended way to get your system information that you used to get from NeoFetch. There's FastFetch, ScreenFetch, a couple others. So just keep in mind that NeoFetch has been uh, abandoned and the development has stopped. Okay? So that was how to um, install and um, it, it, how to install and make executable, how to download the Kaspersky uh, virus removal tool application file, make it executable, and then a couple different ways of um, of um, of launching it. Okay, so that was how to install and launch the Kaspersky virus removal tool on Pop OS Linux 22.04. Okay, uh, once again, I am Paul, and I am the lead research technician uh, at the uh, How to Linux Research Labs, and I'm also the administrator of the uh, Pop OS Linux Facebook group on Facebook, and. I want to thank you for watching, subscribing, and I hope that when you watch the video, you like, comment, and subscribe. And until my next video, happy Linuxing.